able to hear me. We're getting started in like 30 seconds. Um, but yeah, I guess while we get started, it's just nice seeing you all here now. And yes, we're just waiting a bit longer. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, I'll be showing you guys, if you're not already familiar with like Google Meets or the live stream, I'm gonna show you how to like type in chat so you can communicate with me. Yeah, otherwise, nice meeting you all. Okay, so it looks like we are going to be getting started now. Uh, okay, so first off, my name is Adere. Uh, you didn't already know my name. This is the first time we're meeting. Uh, so yeah, it's very nice to meet all of you guys. As you know, this is a course from learningwithme.org and we're going to be learning HTML. Uh, it's the language of the web. We're gonna learn what we need to do in order to build our own websites and all the components we use, all, this, all the stuff that goes into building websites. Um, what else? So I guess I'll tell you a bit about myself. Uh, so currently I'm 15. If you didn't already know, learning with me is for like youth by youth. So youth are teaching youth and we're sharing our skills and knowledge uh, with everyone. Uh, so yeah, I'm 15 years old. I'm currently in high school, uh, my second year of high school. Um, I guess some hobbies. I like playing soccer. That's my favorite sport. Um, my favorite subject in school is math and science and yeah that's just a little bit about myself so maybe uh if you guys could figure out how to use the chat in google meets or uh the youtube live stream maybe you could try typing what your hobbies are so if you're on a desktop i believe you look closer to the top right there's that chat area up there Football. Okay, nice. Are you talking about American football or like the football soccer that you kick with your legs? Anyway, you guys can also see your age if that's all right. Hockey on ice, soccer. Okay, so that, that's really interesting. I hope throughout uh, this 10 day period while we're learning HTML, I hope I get to know you guys a lot better and we can become good friends. That'd be cool. Soccer. Okay. Yes, that's awesome. And yes, let's get started now. Let me just make sure everything's running correctly. Uh, okay, yeah, it looks like everything's running well and we'll get started. Uh, so yeah, welcome, it's the first day. We have a whole lot to discuss today. And I hope you guys are excited and ready to learn. Uh, so classroom environment expectations. Uh, so I know we're not all on Google Meet. Some of us are viewing this through the YouTube live stream. Um, but still, some of this applies to everyone. Um, so yeah, at times I'm going to ask you guys questions just to try to keep you involved and engaged with the camp. Uh, so if you could possibly do your best to answer them through chat and keep your mic muted, um, that's just for, just for, I guess, for less distractions or like a weird interruption, if you get what I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah, that would be best. Maybe at the end of the class, you can, you might can talk to me and we can just talk, but yeah during the class and stuff like that, try to answer your questions and also ask your questions through the chat on Google Meet or the YouTube live stream and I'll be looking there. So I actually need to load up the YouTube live stream so I can look at any questions that come up there. Uh, but yeah, I have Google Meets open and I can see your responses. And yes, that's pretty much it. And just be respectful to one another if you're talking to other people and yeah. Okay, so HTML, you probably knew you were choosing HTML, you didn't choose another camp like Python or Scratch. So what's the difference between those camps and this camp? So uh, HTML, first things first, we use HTML to build web pages. It's the language of the web and it's what, uh, it's the coding language that's used to write websites. So that's the thing that should be said first and most foremost. Um, HTML, it's an abbreviation, it stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So let's discuss exactly what this even means. What is a Hypertext Markup Language? Let me turn on my pointer there, and yeah. Okay, so a markup language. Uh, in other words, a computer language, uh, a markup language is in other words, a computer language that uses tags to define elements within a document. So you haven't discussed tags or elements yet, we're going to be discussing that as well today. So yeah, we have a lot of terminology to go through. Um, so yeah, HTML is a computer language that uses uh, that is used for creating websites and web pages. So we already knew that. 
And something else to know is that it's also a great language to start learning if you're just new to coding in general. So you shouldn't be worried going into HTML if you don't know anything about it, because uh, we're going to be going from the start. And it's also not too complicated. And I bet you guys will be able to follow along. OK, moving on. So writing HTML. So the fastest and easiest way to write HTML is through a text editor. Um, so a text editor is a computer program that allows you to edit text. Uh, so you've probably used a text editor before if you've, have if you've had to write something on your computer rather than doing it on paper for school. Uh, you're probably using a text editor. So editing text or just editing in general, just being able to uh, change something. So you can add on to text, you can remove text, you can overwrite it, you can just change it, right? So that's editing. And it's just a place that allows you to edit text. So there are many text editors, like uh, applications we can download that have their O's pros and cons, and they're more like specified for to be used for coding. Uh, so these are just some. Uh, you also have a text editor pre-installed on your computer usually. Um, if you're on Windows, like Windows 10, Windows 7, you usually have Notepad, this one in the center, pre-installed. So maybe we can look for that later. Moving on. Uh, by the way, are there any questions so far? Let me make sure I look out for questions. I just need to go here quickly. Can everybody hear me all right? Do I need to speak louder? Is the volume good? Uh, okay. Okay, so we'll move on. And we're going to be talking about some more HTML terminology now because we need to learn them. So if we're actually writing our code in HTML, uh, we have to use some symbols we might already be familiar with, so let's discuss them. So the first is angle brackets. Um, so this is what an, a left angle bracket looks like, and this is what a right angle bracket looks like. Uh, just together, we call them angle brackets in general. Uh, you may already recognize these symbols from the greater than or less than symbols in mathematics. We're just in math class. Uh, so just to make sure we can actually find that symbol on our keyboard, because I'm not sure if we're too familiar with it, maybe try typing it out in chat. So I'll type it out first. Uh, that is a right angle bracket I typed, and I'll type out a left angle bracket next, which should be there as well. So hold on, I'm going to also go do this on the YouTube live stream just so you can see it there. So one second. Make sure I haven't missed any questions there. One second. So yeah, let's try typing out angle brackets. Uh, so let me say this. Uh, it's closer to the bottom left area of your keyboard, I would say that. Uh, the first left angle bracket is beside your M key. And yeah. So let's, let me take a look, see if we're all getting, okay, yep. So it looks like we already got the hang of it. So that's good. And I'm telling you right now, we're going to be using that a lot when we're writing HTML code. So that's why I'm telling you to try to find it right now. Uh, and we're just about to get into what we're actually going to be using for. Uh, so remember, if you have any questions while we're going along, make sure to put them in chat. I'm just loading up the YouTube live chat right now so I can just see that as well. Make sure we're good. Okay, I believe we should be good. One second, please. Okay, yeah, it looks like we are good. So let's continue on. Uh, so yeah, these are angle brackets. You might recognize them from the greater or less symbols in math. Okay, next is slashes. So we have a forward slash and a backslash. So we also might have used this, and we will be using it in HTML very often when we're writing HTML code. Uh, so the forward slash is also June is just the slash. We don't always have to put a forward in front of it because it's just the most common slash. And we have the backslash over here as well. So maybe you could also try typing that in the Google Meet chat. So I'll type them as well. So you do not have to use shift to activate the forward slash. And then for the backslash, you also do not have to activate switch. Uh, sorry, shift, you don't have. So yeah, those are forward and backslashes. Uh, we're gonna be using the backslashes a lot more in HTML, but yeah. Okay, so that's great. Looks like we got that and let's continue on. So later, if you continue uh, going to like computers and you like to do stuff like that with computer science, maybe uh, you'll come to find that like forward slashes and backslashes are used for a lot of interesting things. Okay, 
So our next terminology is not just symbols on our keyboard now, but it's more of like a concept. So we're going to be talking about HTML elements. So an element that we might already know of, or just elements in the real world could be um, elements on the periodic table, stuff like that. So in HTML, we have our own elements, and these elements are like components on our web page. Uh, so there's a huge amount of HTML elements, and here are just some we'll be covering soon. Uh, so there's the HTML element. Uh, all of the elements, by the way, define something, and they're basically a component on the page. So the HTML element defines the HTML document. The P element defines a paragraph, so that's just text on your H on your web page. Uh, the H1 tag defines the largest heading, so basically a title. Uh, the head tag defines a container or metadata. We'll be discussing that later. The body tag defines the body of the web page. That's where all your content goes. And then the image element defines the uh, image, just defines an image. So once again, there's a huge amount. There's not only six. Uh, these are just some we'll be discussing and covering soon. So yeah, let's move on. Okay, so HTML tags. So this is something you're gonna be hearing a lot while we learn about HTML and while we learn how to write HTML is HTML tags. We'll be hearing about this a lot. So HTML tags are composed of multiple of the elements we've just discussed now, and let's look at how they're used. So we have an opening tag and a closing tag in HTML. These full things over here that I'm going around in a circle, these are the full tags. And then we have opening and closing. And in between those opening and closing tags is where we put our content or values. So uh, let's look at this example here for our opening tag. This is the syntax for our opening tag, I guess we could say. So we start off with our left angle bracket that we discussed earlier. Then we have our HTML element. In this case, it was the P element. Then after that, we have our right angle bracket to close it off. Uh, so yeah, it's just our element going in between the two angle brackets, so it's not too complicated. And this P element, if we want to remember, is used for paragraphs. Okay, so next we have uh, for our closing tags, we start off with the left angle bracket. Then we have a forward slash now. Uh, the reason we have this forward slash is, I guess, to differentiate the opening and closing tags because we don't want them to look the same, right? So we can identify them. Then after that, we have the P element. Then we have the right angle bracket closing it off again. So the only difference between the opening and closing tags is that forward slash that comes before the HTML element. So remember, if you have any questions, I'll be looking for them. Let me go back here quickly and make sure I'm not missing anything. So it looks like I'm good. We're going to continue on. You can ask questions from anywhere far back. I'll just be continuing on, though. So it's best if you ask them before I get too far ahead. But yeah, so hopefully that makes sense about the opening and closing tags. And then we actually want to see how it's used. So here's the HTML page structure. So you'll notice on your HTML web page, what is the meaning of? OK, so. Uh, this was a closing tag example I showed over here. Um, so I'll break it down again. We have opening and closing tags in HTML. Uh, the reason we have opening and closing tags is because we want to put stuff in between them. So we'd start off with our opening tag and have our closing tag. I'll be getting more into about like why we have it like that and what we do with opening and closing tags. But anyways, um, pretty much this is just what our closing tag looks like. So this P over here, this thing is what's usually changing. This P is for a paragraph, and all this is is our HTML element. And if we remember, uh, there are many different HTML elements we could put in here. I could put in um, H1 instead. I could put in head. I could put in just anything else, right? We just need a closing tag. And for a closing tag, we need an element. So I decided to use P or the paragraph element as this example element here. So you could replace it with pretty much any element. So hopefully that clears that up a bit, no problem. OK, so HTML structure. Uh, so here's what the start tag looks like. And the close tag we already looked at. So the difference is that the forward slash is for the element. And yeah, so that's how they're easily differentiated with that forward slash in the end tag. So um, there are, are a few exceptions to things that don't follow the start and end tag rule. There are some things in HTML, some elements that don't have an end tag and only a start tag. And we'll be discussing that later once we get further in. But anyways, uh, here's what the HTML page structure looks like. Uh, so we use multiple elements in our HTML page. I'll be describing each, uh, what each of these elements do again. And yeah, it'll hopefully make sense. Um, so yeah, first of all, 
we notice that we have a lot of starting and closing tags and you can see how it almost wraps. <laughs> Uh, the reason it wraps is why I had the picture of the burrito over here because everything's wrapping together. It's starting to like form a wrapper burrito, I guess you'd say. So we first have our HTML tag. And if you remember what the HTML element is up here, we can go back just two slides and we can say that it defines the HTML document. So it basically says everything inside this, everything in, inside between these two tags are going to be uh, HTML. And you should look at it. Right, so this says everything inside here is going to be HTML. Then we have the head tag, or actually before we get into that, we also notice that the HTML uh, element closes down here as well. So it wraps around all our HTML content. Then we have our head tag. Uh, the head tag is where all the metadata content goes, and we can also put our title in there. So right now, metadata, we're not gonna get into that right now. We wanna keep things kind of more laid back for today, uh, but we'll get into that later. But yeah, we can put our title in the head tag. So our head tag opens and closes, and then in between where it's opening and closing, we have another tag again. This is a using another element, the title element that we haven't discussed yet. And it's basically giving the title for our web page, right? And then we can have the opening and closing the title tag, and then we put our content in there. So I can literally just type in whatever title I want. And in this case, I typed in a cool title. And remember, everything is still opening and closing. Then we have our body tag. So our body tag is the body of our web page. It's where all our content goes. So our images, our text, our videos, anything that's going into our, uh, anything that we want the user to look at is most likely going to be in our body tags. So remember that opens and closes as well. And usually it's gonna be a lot bigger of an opening and closing because it's gonna have a lot more stuff in it compared to the rest, or at least not compared to the HTML tag, but compared to everything besides the HTML tag. So uh, here I've been using the P tag now. I'm just calling it the P tag because it uses the P element. And I just have a cool paragraph. So it's just text. We use the P tag mainly for text. So we'll be testing this out ourselves in a moment. Uh, but let's just keep looking at what we're doing. So any questions so far as well? I don't want to go too far ahead. So any questions? You can type out your questions now and I'll be paying extra attention to them. OK. So it looks like we're good and we can continue on. Uh, so that's basically the basic HTML page structure. Uh, once again, it's not too complicated. I'm pretty sure you guys will get the hang of it pretty fast. And yeah, so let me head back here and let's go on practice this ourselves. Let's actually practice this ourselves now. Uh, so before we get into that, I need to mention that uh, we're gonna have extra activities to do throughout the week so we can um, keep expanding our knowledge on this topic and stay engaged throughout the week. Uh, so we're gonna be using Solo Learn to do this. It's a platform where you can practice your HTML coding. Uh, we're gonna be using it for now, but eventually we're gonna be leaving them soon. But for now, it's a good thing to use. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna need you guys to make a Solo Learn account. And I'll also need you to navigate to HTML fundamentals and you can start learning from there. But before we go into that, uh, we're just gonna leave this presentation now. And I just kinda wanna uh, give you guys a feel for what we're trying to do. Uh, so first of all, what I'm going to try doing is I'm going to go to a website. I'm going to show you how I'm going to give you proof that it was built with HTML. So uh, let's see, what website do I want to go to? I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to, let's say, I'm just going to go on Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a place where you can just find free information. So I'm just going to go to Wikipedia. You may have heard of it. Maybe you can give me website suggestions you want me to visit so I can prove to you it was built with HTML and chat so I can visit them. But anyways, here's Wikipedia. Something we can usually do on our web browser is that we can usually view the source code it was built with. So we can press, uh, we can right click and we can say inspect or we can view page source, which is what I'm going to do. So if I press on this, it'll open up here. And then immediately right at the top, the first thing you'll notice, let me zoom in so you can see this better. It looks like a lot of stuff because of course this is a bigger website, it's a lot more complicated, but let's just zoom in a bit more. So immediately right at the top, uh, ignore this stuff over here, we're not talking about that yet, but we do see that HTML tag. So that's pretty interesting, right? So something as big as Wikipedia needs to use HTML as well. And that's what all web pages use. So there are many other uh, tags here that we haven't discussed yet. And they're doing a lot of things we haven't discussed yet, but we will be learning 
uh, some of this. We'll be we'll be able to kind of understand what's going on back here because of course we can't understand everything because we're not the ones who wrote it. But we'll be able to understand like more of what's going on here. But we immediately we can already recognize that they are using HTML because we see this HTML tag here. And I bet if we go all the way down, we'll see a closing HTML tag as well, which I am correct. So a closing HTML tag all the way down here. So that's saying everything in here is HTML. And we also have a body tag down here, the closing for the body tag. And yeah, it's just a lot of stuff going on, but we can identify those tags. And that's how I can tell you this is HTML. So I can go to another website as well. Maybe you guys can give me a website, a link to a website that you want me to visit and prove that's HTML. Uh, let me think, maybe youtube.com. We probably all use YouTube, right? So youtube.com. I'm going to view the page source if that loads in. We're just waiting for that to load and I can show it to you. Okay, so it loads in. So there's a whole lot of stuff here again, right? It looks very, very complicated, but that's not what we're paying attention to now because uh, it's the first day, of course, we're not learning all of this now. But once again, I can zoom in, just in case you can't read it. I can zoom in a lot more, and then you can see HTML up here, that HTML tag. We can identify that HTML tag over here, right? So that's YouTube, another really, really, really popular website. Uh, that also needs to use HTML. And this all just points towards HTML being the language of the web. So if you want to build a website, you're, it's going to use HTML, definitely. So I can quickly try to scroll down to the bottom. And then look at this. We have a lot of more tags. So we haven't discussed these tags, but these are also tags in HTML. Uh, so let me see if we can see any more tags we know. Let's scroll a bit more up. Okay, we're not going to read through this. This is a lot of stuff, of course, because it's a very big website. Um, but yeah, this also uses HTML. And yeah, if you want to give me a website, I can also view and show that it uses HTML. Pretty much what I'm doing to prove this is that I'm viewing the page source code. So it's what code goes into writing the website. So I'm going to go close out of this now, and we're going to try writing HTML for ourselves. So if you guys could follow along, that would be great. So we're going to go to solalearn.com. Once again, that's what we're going to be using for extra activities and writing uh, code. So you might probably need to sign up for this uh, if you're not already familiar with it. So you're probably going to have to sign up for SolarLearn unless you already have an account. And what you're going to do is that you're going to head to courses and you're going to start taking the HTML fundamentals course or just the HTML course it's called now. Uh, so yeah, it has some easy content. I uh, will take up very little amounts of your time. I don't think it's going to take up uh, too much of your time. It'll probably take up an estimate of like what, for the amount of stuff I'm assigning you guys, it'll probably take maybe 15 minutes at most a day just to complete these tiny activities. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty fun. It's just like multiple choice questions. And yeah, so, so you need to sign up at solarn.com. So you just need to give them your email and then you create a password to put with it. It will work like that. So you can sign on with the Google account. And yes, so that's actually going to be something you can do now, or you can try doing later if you remember what I'm going to say. And yeah, if you have any questions, just make sure to ask them. So um, yeah, I think it's best if we take our break now, because uh, I don't want to keep talking for too long and get you guys bored. So we're going to take maybe a five minute break now, and we'll come back and we'll continue. Does that sound good? Okay, uh, so yeah, maybe take, maybe get a glass of water. Um, yeah, just relax, stretch, I don't know. Okay, so I'll talk to you guys soon.
back. Um, and yeah, so welcome back. We'll continue. Hopefully you enjoyed your break. And yeah, so let me just, I'll wait like two more seconds just to make sure everybody's back. Okay. Okay. It looks like we're good and we'll continue. Okay. So yeah, we talked about signing up for Learn Solo Learn. We might talk about that more in the, more at the end, sorry, if we're having trouble signing up, but for now, let's just continue on. So Solo Learn has this thing called a code playground. And what it does actually is that it allows us to write code. We can write code there and we can test out code quickly. So that's what we use it for. So that's actually what we're going to try doing right now. So I'm just going to press on new code. And you guys can also try following along if you would like. So let's wait for this to load. OK, there we go. It looks like we're in. I'm just going to go full screen here so you can see that a little bit better. And there we go. So let's run this. And OK, so we're in SolarWinds Code Playground, and we're going to be writing some HTML code, just simple HTML code. So here's what uh, the HTML document looks like. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can read that better. Sorry. OK. You can't find code playground. Hmm, OK. So if you're on Solo Learn's website, uh, if they have a navigation bar at the top, you should see code playground right beside courses. Do you see that? I'll go to full screen. Do you see that code playground? Hopefully you should be able to see that. Uh, okay, I'll just keep going on until you say you can't see it for some reason. And yeah, okay. So we're in Solo Learn's Code Playground and they already have some basic HTML code for us. So this thing at the top here, uh, we're gonna be talking about that next camp day, but I guess I might mention for now, we call this a doc type declaration. And it also helps declare that, hey, whatever reading is going to be HTML. So it's just basically telling whatever's uh, reading our HTML that is HTML, right? So it should do certain things. Okay. Okay, yep, so nice and we put the link there for you. And yeah, so we have some basic HTML code in, us, in here for us already, but we're gonna remove it for now and I'm actually gonna rewrite my own only. So once again, you can ignore this thing at the top for now, it doesn't concern us too much. But that just specifies the version of HTML we're using, which is HTML5. And yeah, so. Uh, the first thing we need, does anybody remember, this is going to be a tough one since we just learned it, but does anyone remember how we define an HTML document, what HTML element we used to do that? Maybe type it in chat. It's a tough one because we just learned it. Okay, yeah, nice. Somebody got it right. We use the HTML tag, and that was the opening tag they put for us like that so so much code playground after you type in the opening tag it'll actually create the closing tag for you and you can just type in between there so it just saves you work from typing so what i can do now we have our html element here we have our actual tags opening and closing and then in, now i'm going to start writing my html code so of course i have to write it in between here uh so next we have a couple more tags coming in so uh we can actually just skip straight to the body tag because that's where our content's going. Uh, the head tag right now, it doesn't concern us too much, but if we were outside of Code Playground and writing our HTML code somewhere else, um, it would be useful. But for us right now, it's not. But just for good sake, I'm just going to put in the head tag here. So we have our head tag and we have our body tag. So with these, like the way these are named, you can almost compare it to like a human body, right? Like the head and the body. Um, anyways. Yeah, so we have this, and I remember I said that the body tag, with the body tag, all the content goes in here. So whatever I want the user to see, I want to type it in the body tag. That's basically the content tag or like the, the site tag, whatever the person is actually going to see. So I'm going to test out one of the elements we learned, which was used for creating paragraphs. So I believe it was what, paragraph tag? or text tag. Does anybody remember what tag we used to like create text or paragraphs, what element that was? Maybe you could tell me in chat as well so I could look at that. Okay, yeah, so it was the P tag, great. So I'm gonna do something now. Uh, I may or may not make a problem. I may not may or may not make a mistake, sorry. And then I would like you guys to please try to correct me and help me fix this problem. So here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna go like, this. 
like that. Hopefully that's good. And then here I'm going to write, uh, hello. So what this should hopefully do is that this should print out my desired results, right? This should print hello to the screen. I should see hello over here on my web page. So is that going to work? Am I doing something wrong? What am I, what did I do wrong here? I am wrong. Okay, so what did I do wrong? There's a single slash, there's a slash in the first tag. Okay, because this is the opening tag, right? And it doesn't have a forward slash. So let's run this now and see if it works. So I'll go like this. And wow, we have hello in our output. So this white box here, this output we're seeing, just so you can know what it actually is, um, this is basically what our web page would output. So if we put this code into a proper text editor and we executed this uh, on our HTML page, we would have this text hello. So if we changed uh, YouTube source code, if we removed everything and then we just put in this simple code here, all it would say would be hello. Does that make sense? Okay, so that is the P tag we've used. So we can do a lot more tags. There are many, many more tags. There's the image tag per se. Uh, there's video tags. We can do so much in HTML. We can have so many different components to our web page that'll make it a lot nicer. We can even use another language, CSS, which will help us style our web page and give colors to our text, to our backgrounds, to stuff like that. We can do a lot of things with HTML. Uh, but we want to keep it a little bit more simple today, and we don't want go to too, go through too many of them. Sorry. Uh, what about the title tag? So yeah, I can use that here. Uh, but I guess to explain the title tag, um, pretty much what the title tag does, it's going to be a little bit hard to explain since we're using Solar's Code Playground. But pretty much what the title tag does is that if you look at my top tab right here where I have this tab open, you see how it says Code Playground, and then it says it tries to say Solo Learn, but it doesn't finish. That's pretty much what the title tag would change, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Kind of get what I'm trying to say? So it's going to be kind of hard to show you the use of some tags in HTML because we're using Solo Learn's Code Playground. And if I didn't already make it clear, uh, most people who write HTML don't use Solo Learn Code Playground. Uh, this is just a place where you can easily experiment with it. So typically, I guess I will as well say this now, typically when we write HTML, we usually use our own text editor, which I was talking about earlier. So that was maybe the text editors you had downloaded on your computer, like Notepad, or maybe something else you downloaded like uh, Notepad++, Sublime, all of that stuff. So for now, we're gonna be using Solo Learn to write our HTML code. Uh, it'll help us in some ways by making it simpler to share our work and um, just quickly get into writing our code and seeing the result of it fast. But then in the future, we're going to be leaving this and we're going to be writing code the same way um, professionals do, the web developers do. So it's in a proper text editor, not a code playground. Uh, so the title tag, I can try to use it right now, but I know we won't see the effect of it. So I can say maybe uh, awesome. I can run that. And you see it's not going to do anything here. Uh, just because we're using somebody else's platform. So if we did this in our own text editor, Awesome would have the output and it would change this title tab over here to Awesome. So I wish I know you guys wish you could probably see it, but we'll be able to see it shortly, maybe in the couple of the next camp days. So hopefully that makes sense. So for now, this is not really useful to us, but we can still, I guess, put it there if we want to. Um, so we're going to also use another tag, the H1 tag. Now, I guess I can explain that one. Uh, so the H1 tag is the heading tag. Uh, the one at the end represents uh, how large it is. So there are different sizes of headings. Um, so there's like H1, H2, H3, H4, and you can keep going and going. Um, so H1 uh, is the largest heading tag. H2 is the second largest. H3 is the third largest. H4 is the fourth largest. And it just keeps going down like that. So I can actually show you that right now. And we'll use each tag. So let's use H1 first. I'll just say largest uh, in between the opening and closing tags, by the way, for this tag specifically, I just put more text again. So I can just say largest like that for H2. Uh, I can say second largest, sir. Second, sorry, I missed that. Second largest. Now also, I guess use H3 
and I'll say third largest. Uh, third largest. And I'll run this now. And we'll see our output. I don't need to have this tag here, so I'll actually take that away. So that hello we see down here is just the P tag we're using. And we see the different sizes of the headings. So this could be useful maybe um, if we're building a tiny blog about ourselves. And then we want to just put a large title saying uh, whatever, whatever our title needs to say. A short, nice, simple title. And then we can use different sizes of these as well. Uh, so I don't want to get into too many tags today because I... The B tag also. Did I mention the B tag? <laughs> uh, yeah, the B tag is also another tag. I'm not sure if I mentioned the B tag today. I was going to discuss more tags like that uh, next camp. Yeah, the B tag is used for bolding. Uh, yeah, it's funny that. So that tells me you have a little bit of experience with HTML already. Because I don't think I mentioned the B tag. Uh, but yeah, the B tag is another tag you can use. I guess we can just quickly look at it now. So it has an opening and closing as well. And then what the B element is, is that it bolds something. So yeah, B tag is used for bolding. So that B element is basically short for bold. So once we start learning more and more, it'll come to like understand that the concepts of like tags and elements are actually pretty simple. And uh, um, yes, yeah, so we have the element and we have the tag. So you just need to know what the element defines and then you can put it into a tag and you can use it. So the B tag, or the B element, sorry, it bolds something, so it bolds text. And we can just put that into a tag to actually use it. So right now, uh, if you're a little bit confused about this, uh, I'll try re-explaining it. You don't really need to listen too much to the B tag, because that's not what we were discussing today. But yeah, there's also that B tag, which is useful. So you can use it to bolt stuff. I'm not going to really use it right now. But yeah, so any questions so far about anything we've discussed? Is everything making sense? Is somebody having trouble accessing the code playground? Okay, so I think we're good here. Um, that's pretty much the main majority of today's lesson. We kind of speed sped through it. Uh, I didn't get any questions really, uh, but yeah, we still have a couple more things to discuss, which will take us up to the period. So let's get out of full screen here. Hopefully, we followed follow. We're able to follow along with the lesson today. So we just I'll do a quick recap and we'll move on. And when we will have our next class, it'll be at the same time as today's next Saturday, but we're not done yet. We still have a lot left or we have a good amount of stuff to discuss left. So let's just wait for this to load. Sorry, I'm not sure why I'm running kind of slow right now on my computer. Okay, there we go. So I'm just gonna do a quick recap of everything we learned and we're gonna do the last thing and we're gonna call it a day, right? Uh, okay, so the expectations, we know that HTML stands for hypertext markup language. We know that now. Uh, HTML is the language used for building websites. And I was able to prove it to you by going onto websites and looking at their source code and showing how they used HTML. Uh, writing HTML, we want to write HTML in a text editor. Right now, we're using SoloLearn's code playground to quickly experiment with our HTML and write it. But in the future, we want to use a text editor, which is just a place that allows us to edit text. Um, angle brackets, we learned those symbols, how we use them for creating tags. Slashes, we learned how the forward slash and backslash and how we use forward slashes in our closing tags. Elements, these elements, there are many elements in HTML. We discussed only really the P element, the H1 element, the HTML element today. And elements define stuff in our HTML page. They create components. Uh, how to create tags, we usually have opening and closing tags. HTML's page structure. So everything's pretty much wrapping similar to a burrito. And we want to use Solo Learn. So I would also like you guys to sign up for Solo Learn again. And uh, there will be things I would, there are going to be tasks I will ask you to do with Solo Learn. And we're also using their code playground currently to quickly write our HTML code. Okay. So we're moving on to our extra activities, but I don't want to show it to you here. I want to just show, I want to show it to you on a different platform. So we're going to be using Moodle. So I believe in your emails, you should have received a learning with me account, a learning with me account to use. So that's gonna be very important to what you're going to do next. Uh, the platform we're gonna be using to complete these extra activities is Moodle. So I'm gonna to go to the website, I also put it in chat. So for the place where you wanna log in. So let me hold on, let me grab this link. And I'll go like that. 
So that's what we're using. Uh, that's where you can show me your extra activities. We can also talk there as well. I just give you some fun tasks to do there. It's not like homework at all, I promise you. Uh, they're usually very simple. It takes a very little amount of time, so you have time to go do something else, maybe play or do homework from school. And um, yeah, so let's look. I'm just going to go on to Moodle myself. I'm going to try do, using it as a learner so you can see kind of what you have to do. But to use Moodle, I believe you should have a username and password that was provided to you in an email. But anyways, let me go on Moodle as well. I can kind of show you how to navigate around it. So there's the dashboard page you'd easily be taken to. You have to log in for the first time as well. I'm going as a student right now. Just waiting for this to load. Okay, so yeah, if you have multiple courses on here, you're going to select the HTML and CSS camp because that's the camp we're in, right? Hopefully everybody's following along. And then uh, you wanna look at day one. So it's the, what is HTML and the basics of HTML, which is what we did today. Uh, so here you can also find the extra activities. I'll just open it up here. I'm not sure if I'm still as a student. Let me turn editing off. Okay, there we go. Uh, so here you'll see day one, what is HTML plus basics? You just wanna press on this day. It'll open up. And you can see the stuff that was for this day. So uh, there's the extra activities. And I also just have a questionnaire for you guys that you can just answer the questions. That's not too hard. The questions are just asking what you like to do for fun and what type of websites you maybe want to build. So I'm just going to press answer the questions and you can see for yourself. So you can just answer these questions. This is just more fun just for me to get to know you guys a bit better. You can just submit your answers and that's pretty much the first thing. And the second thing for the main extra activities, which uh, usually requires you to do something on solo learn. I'll show you that now. So let me cancel this. So it's pretty easy to navigate. I think you guys will be able to figure this out. Anyways, for next thing for day one, once again, we're still under day one. Uh, you can go to extra activities now. And then on that, yeah, uh, the description, and then you can click here and it'll take you to where you can basically see like a paper with the extra activities. So it has all the steps for you. So I'll just wait for that to load too. Sorry for these loading times. Uh, anyways, yeah, extra activities, just a couple of steps. I know it looks like a lot of reading, but I'm telling you it's very simple. First one's create a solo learn account if you have one already. The second one is to complete module one on the HTML course on solo learn. Uh, the fourth task is to find 10 new HTML tags and figure out what they do. And then once you're done, you can submit a text document showing the tags you found in their uses. I'll be showing you how to do that afterwards. Then the fifth task is just to answer that questionnaire I gave you. Uh, under the resources for camp day one, which was just asking what you like to do for fun and um, what you want, what type of website you want to build. So yeah, so pretty much first task is like, what, 30 seconds. Second task is like five minutes. Uh, this one's just taking the screenshot, so it's like 10 seconds. Uh, fourth task is maybe another good seven minutes. And then fifth task is like two minutes. So it's probably a total of like, 20 to 20 minutes at most you'll probably be spending on this so i don't want you guys to get worried this is not like homework either and it's a lot more fun because i don't like homework either if you unless if you guys like homework but i don't like homework personally okay uh so i also have the links for where you can go so learn sign up page you can try to access if you can find this page and then you can also see where the html course can be found so it's important for you to get onto the moodle and then be able to find the extra resources Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So remember, we're under the HTML camp. You wanna press on day one. And then from there, you just um, do the stuff. You'll see all the tasks. So extra activities and a questionnaire. And that is pretty much all. Um, so yeah, does that make sense? Are there any questions about anything we discussed today? Also, I really want to emphasize because like, you guys might be thinking in your heads, this stuff is not like homework at all, I promise. 
because uh, once again, I do not like getting homework, so I would not give boring homework like that as well. So it's just more fun stuff, I guess I would say. So it's just literally just me. It's you telling me about yourselves, and it's just you answering questions that we already found the answer to today. So it's going to be very quick. It's not going to take up a lot of your time at all, and it might even be fun. Okay, so I'll stay a little bit longer for extra questions. If we don't have any extra questions, it says it's saying invalid login. Um, so why is it saying invalid login? It's either because your email or password is incorrect. Uh, probably the people in chat will help you get logged in. So we'll wait a bit longer for you to get logged in and then we can continue on. Um, but yeah, any questions about anything we've done? Because that's pretty much the main part of, that's pretty much uh, day one completed. So hopefully it didn't, it wasn't too boring for you guys and it didn't feel too long. Okay, uh, I'm waiting a bit longer on questions. If you are no questions and you logged on to Moodle successfully, uh, that's it. It says invalid login. Okay, it's probably saying invalid login for your username from what I heard. You need to put in your email address. It's probably your learning with me email address. And then for your password, it's just change me. And then you can change your password later as well. So if you scroll up in chat, also people in chat are going to be helping you. People called AM and OS will be helping you get logged in. OK, nice. So Mateo, OK, it looks like you got in. Am I correct? Let me make sure. OK, so yeah, it looks like you got in. Hopefully you can navigate to day one and just quickly do those right now if you would like. And yeah. Or you don't have to do it now. You just need to. Uh, you need to get it done soon. Uh, you don't have to, or should I even say, soon? You have basically till Friday to get it done. Then even you can submit it late, anyways. But yeah, you have a lot of time, and it's very, very, very short. So you don't even have to do it now if you wouldn't want to. Okay, so um, yeah, if you got successfully in, uh, you think you're able to access the extra activities and the questionnaire. Um, you made your solo learning account, you did all that stuff. Uh, you don't have any questions either about anything we did today or maybe even just the course itself. You're free to go. And it was nice meeting you all as well today as well. No problem. Okay, so once again, if you have any questions, you got into Moodle, you can do the extra activities in the questionnaire. Uh, and yeah, yeah, you have no questions about anything we did today or the course itself, you're free to go. And that's pretty much the end of camp day one. So we'll be meeting back next Saturday at the same time again. So I hope to see you there. Okay. No questions, and you got into the Moodle. How can I see the extra activities? Okay, so I'll quickly show you how where it is again. So I believe you're starting off from your dashboard. I hope my screen looks like yours. It may look a little bit different. Let me just wait for this to load. So you go to the HTML and CSS camp. Uh, it should be over course overview. If you're taking another camp, you'll also see that there as well. So once you're there, uh, you see day one, what is HTML plus basics? That's just the title for today's camp, the one we did today. So you want to press on that. And then under here now, you'll see extra activities and you'll see questionnaire. Does that make sense? So you want to press on extra activities now. It'll take you to the extra activities page. And then it says the title, of course, extra activities, extra activities for HTML camp day one. And then you want to click on this link over here, and it'll take you to the document, 
and you can just read the extra activity. So I pressed on it and here. So you should be on this page and then you can just see the instructions and then they'll also have the links you'll need to do the stuff. It's saying access denied. Okay, if it's saying access now, let me see if I would change the link then, because that may be because you're trying to join it on your personal email. So I'm going to try fixing that now. Uh, you should try joining on your learning with dot me email, because I know it'll work with that one. But I'll try to see if I can make it, if I can make it so you can view it if you're not on your personal email. So give me a second, please. So let me go like this one second. Um, let me see. Can I change it so that everybody can view it? OK, fine. I'll change it. So anyone with the link can view it now, OK? So let me make sure that works. And I'm going to try to go back and visit again. So if you try joining now, I believe it should work. Then in the future as well, just for like stuff like this, I recommend you do use your learning with me email. Okay, so it looks like the link still works. Okay, it should probably change now if you try doing it again, because I've changed the access for everybody. So try joining again. So try pressing on that link or maybe refreshing the page. Does it work? Could you please tell me if it works? Okay, you can see, I can see now. Okay, that's good. Okay, no problem. Okay, no problem. But I also recommend, once again, you should use your learning with me email for stuff that's related to HTML. Okay, but yeah, I can see you're in it, see the extra activities, and that is pretty much all. Okay, so any more questions? Everybody is able to get into Moodle. Everybody has no questions about the course or the content. That's all for today's camp, guys. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So if you want to, so I guess since you guys are still here, I'm not too sure why, but I guess a heads up for next class. I think we're going to be learning how to use images. We're going to be adding images to our web page. We're going to be learning about lists or unordered lists and ordered lists. Uh, and just a couple more tags as well. So we're just going to keep expanding our knowledge on tags. On whom should we submit it? Okay. So um, I guess I can show you how to submit that as well. So if you go back, I believe, um, let me see. I want to see if I'm going to be able to see the page you guys see. So I think if I switch my role, I can see what you guys see. So give me a second. Um, this is going to be a little bit harder because I can't see the same things you guys see since I have a different role on this website than you guys. Um, and it's seeming to not let me switch my role. Okay, yeah, I can't switch my role for some reason, but there should be a button that lets you submit and attach your work. And there should be an area we can also type. Does that make sense? So I can't see it, but you guys kind of have to just look for it on that, um, on the Moodle page. I wish I, let me see if I can do something so I can see the same screen as you. Um, My favorite subjects is also math. Okay, that's cool. It can be tricky at times though, but when you know it, it's fun, right? Okay, so yeah, I hope that's all. I'm gonna need you guys to try to find the submit button in a place where you can type out your stuff because I can't see it myself. So I don't know what to tell you, where to tell you to look. But all I know is that when you press on extra activities, you should see stuff there because I have a different screen from you. Okay, but yeah, that's pretty much all guys. Does that work? Is everybody, does that work guys? Any questions? Did I answer your question by the way? Okay, so that's all guys. You guys are free to leave now. 
<laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. It was nice meeting you all. Bye. Yep. Bye. No problem. Okay, bye guys.